FBI Behavior Analysis Unit. She is with us live now. Thank you for giving us some time on this case. There is so much curiosity. There's so much focus on this investigation. I want to talk to you a little bit about the killer because that's your background. It's been your experience. It's a sick thing uh, that happened here, and it's a sick person who did it. But compiling a profile of this person based on the evidence, based on what police know, how do you do that? Where do you start? Well, the first thing that you have to do is pull together all the information. That means you look at um, the res forensic results, the lab results. You look at crime scene photographs. You look at, you review all the investigative reports. And it's through the analysis of, of blending all that together that gives you the information about how well planned it was or not well planned. It gives you uh, an idea of post-defense behavior, which right now is of critical importance. It also gives you information about the offender's personality. So, for example, um, if this offender went in at that time of the morning in a house that was occupied by it, by at least six people, I mean, that's a very high-risk behavior and high risk, um, a high risk personality is not just going to be high risk in the middle of a homicide. They're going to be high risk in other things that they do outside of this homicide. So I think as, as much as law enforcement can give the public bits and pieces of this offender's personality, the more likely that they will be able to identify a possible suspect. What does it tell you, Mary Ellen, that the person who did this, or even about the crime that was committed, that the two people in the home that did survive, that the killer did not go after them. What does that indicate? Well, based just on public source information, what I would I would say is that um, there was someone or, or multiple people in that house that were the focus of the um, offender. And that can be borne out in terms of what the injury pattern was to these victims. So if you have one or two victims whose injuries are much more um, severe um, and or different from the other victims, and then you still have the two surviving victims, that would tell me that once the offender got to the victims, that they wanted to focus on that they were able to complete the crime and then exit the house so it, it becomes a matter of who really was the focus of the attack and police have not said yet but it is scary to think that whoever did this is out there living their life day to day right pretending uh that everything is normal going about a routine essentially being around the public people that they know talk about the mental state of somebody trying to conceal this awful thing that they did and the weight that that puts on someone? Well, I would say that it's likely um, that this is someone who is following the investigation on both on TV and online to um, understand where are the investigators in this case. I would also say there's probably leakage and leakage is just like a leaky faucet that this offender may be talking about the case just like everyone else is. And they may be saying things that would be critical of law enforcement. Oh, they're never going to solve this case. And their their leakage could also include comments about, well, the victims brought this on themselves. So you compile that with a group of, of personality traits. So this is an offender who's a high-risk offender. This is someone who is very experienced with that knife and took it with him. That knife was is very important to this offender. And this offender is practiced with this knife. People that know this offender know that this is someone that's high, has anger, terrible anger issues, is very impulsive, is a very revengeful person, most likely. And now is is they're aware of the knife and the fact that even before the murders, this person probably spoke about this knife and how skilled they were at it. Mm -hmm. And now you blend in their interest in the case, as well as their criticism of law enforcement and their victim blaming. Now, is that going to point to the person down the street? No, not necessarily, but we only need one person to come forward. One person who knows that this could very likely be a very viable suspect in this case. Wow. Thank you.